Hello, and welcome to the first of our series of interviews where we speak to actors about the drama school audition experience. Today we are lucky enough to welcome West End leading man and heartthrob Oliver Thompson. Ollie's theatre credits include Our House, Mamma Mia, Wicked, Guys and Dolls, We Will Rock You, Rock of Ages, Kinky Boots, and he's currently playing William Shakespeare in the West End Musical and Juliet. Thank you for agreeing to be our first interviewee in this series. Thank you for having me. But we're not going to actually talk about your performing career. We're going to ignore that for today. We're actually going to cast our minds back to 23 years ago when you auditioned for drama school. Yeah, I mean, it's probably more like 10, but... All right, come on, let's see how good my memory is. Uh, I auditioned for Doreen Bird was my very first audition. Um, uh, predominantly a dance school then, and I mean, I would say probably still is now, but um, uh, that was my very first audition I'd ever done for a college. Uh, and I remember, I remember, Doing, my, doing the dance round, doing the songs and a monologue, and then being offered a uh, scholarship there and there on the spot. And I was like, what? This isn't how I was meant to go. Um, and uh, so I came away from that going, I'm definitely going there. I'm going there. They were great. They loved me. I'm going there. I'm going there. Um, and then my mum was like, no, calm down. You've got a few more auditions to go. And so then I proceeded to audition for uh, Mount View, uh, the Oxford what's it called? Oxford Drama School. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's very, very well established now, actually. Um, fantastic acting college. Art said, and I think that was pretty much it. I didn't really, I knew I wanted to do mainly musical theatre. So what made you choose those colleges? Um, I think at the time, I mean, we're talking 23 years ago, they were sort of some of the leading schools in musical theatre. Um, I knew that I needed to, if I wanted to do musical theatre, I needed to work on my weakest discipline, which was dance, um, before attending a college. And so I looked at colleges that would push me in that direction, but at the same time support me in the areas that I knew would be important. And were you terrified of your dance audition? Or were you, okay, you're saying you were less experienced in it. Was that something you were dreading? Yeah, I mean, I think I wasn't terrified until... Um, a couple of the rounds when I sort of discovered that there were lads in there that could really, really move. Um, from, from sort of growing up in a, a small, smallish town um, and there not being many boys who danced. And, and you're, you're, a, you're a tall guy, that's a lot of limb to move. A lot of limb, a lot of limb. And I, I think it was probably more that the other auditionees should have been worried about dancing in the same room as me than me being worried about it, if I'm honest. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I did. Um, I remember seeing Why God Why from, or it might be just called Why God. I think I think it is called Why God. Yeah, from Miss Saigon. I think Why God Why just sounds more <laughs> melodramatic. Um, <laughs> uh, Why God from Miss Saigon, um, and I think it was Maria from West Side Story. My two two song song choices. You went classic, very classic. Yeah, yeah, classic. Well, my my mum was a big theatre buff, so she um she sort of almost influenced me quite heavily on what I should have been singing. And your acting pieces? Oh, my acting pieces. My acting pieces were um, a monologue by Aristophanes. I can't remember which play it's from. Um, my mum, again, influenced me on what monologue I should do. Um, uh, I, I remember thinking, God, this doesn't make any sense to me. The classical monologue thing was very alien to me. So why did you choose not to do the kind of Shakespeare route and you picked something slightly different? I think just trying to be different, trying to stand out a little bit. I think a lot of them, a lot of the monologues that are that are uh, sort of audition friendly, if you like, or for the right for the right feeling that sit well in a sort of seventeen, eighteen year old, um, were um, were kind of very over, a bit overdone, a bit obvious. So the the chance to take on a monologue that was something a bit different, I think the plan was that the audition panel would sit up and take notice. And my, my modern monologue was a, a, a monologue from a play called Man of the Moment by Alan Aikborn, I believe, um, which was, um, I remember being a lot of fun. I think I've used it quite a few times since then. Um, another, little, another little nugget of information for the dance audition back in those days, I had to do a solo dance, and I did a solo dance in a unitard to car wash. Wow. And did you self-choreograph? Or... Uh, me and my mum, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
you got offers from a few colleges, but where did you pick? Uh, I, I ended up picking Arts Ed, um, Arts Educational in Chiswick. Uh, it seemed to be a college that had fantastic facilities, a great reputation, and um, focused uh, kind of on the uh, all round on all three disciplines. Um, as much as I kind of knew I wanted to push myself with the dancing side of it, um, I discovered in my audition for Arts Ed that they they very much were pushing me in the right direction for what I what I needed. And are you pleased? Do you think you made the right decision? Yeah, I think I did for me. I think I, I think I did. I mean, it's very easy in sort of hindsight, 20 years into your career, where you think, oh, now I want to be doing more TV and film and stuff. And if I'd gone to a more of a legit acting establishment, that maybe uh, my career would have taken me in that direction. But I don't know if I would have got my foot in the door with musical theatre if, if I hadn't have improved on my dancing as much, which fundamentally sort of led me to playing parts that have sort of given me the chance to stretch those... Um, acting skills anyway so um, I think fundamentally for me it was the right college to go to. Me and Ollie did go to Arts Ed together that's how we met and we're very you know we've known each other for years he was an usher at my wedding I was an usher at his wedding so we are very familiar and I can tell you I remember those unitards. <laughs> I, think I was, remember the sad, thing, those sad thing is I think there was only one I think it was a uni <laughs> no way. Wear, wear, you were in wear, those wear, every wear. day there's got to be more than one <laughs> There's no way they were being hand washed I night after there night. Is. <laughs> I really don't think there is. So you trained at Arts Ed. Was it Arts Ed that um taught you your famous one hand in the sky like salute that you do in most of your performances? I think it's just something that's always been in me. I mean, it's just you know, it, it's, it's it's just, just there. I mean, there should be. If you want, we can do a whole masterclass on just that. The sad thing is the amount of auditions and parts I've been up for where it re always the song almost requires it at the end of the number anyway. <laughs> so I just I think that's what gets me the jobs is it just the end of every song. Yeah. It's probably what got you into college. Probably, probably. In fact, I think it was in the choreography of Car Wash. Don't take anything for granted. Don't sit on your laurels just because you may have been told that you uh, are, uh, are talented and that have that you've that you're going to go far and you do all that doesn't mean that there aren't hundreds of other people out there who are also in the sort of same same level as you um, it's very easy when you when you're in your sort of hometowns to sort of think oh i'm i'm going to i'm going to go and do this i'm going to do that uh, i can go for strength strength surely i'll surely i'll be able to get past the singing round surely i'll be able to get past that don't take it for granted just focus on making you yourself the best version you can be because um, when you hit the audition room you want to really feel a hundred percent and not not suddenly a little bit shaken by the fact that hold on there's a lot of talent in this room it's always a, such a fine line between you getting a place at a college and not getting a place at a college getting a job in a show and, and not getting it yeah i've sat on audition panels before and it's always like oh goodness there's always easily always twice as many slots that you could give places to than that actually are available so if you realise that it's, it's, the, it's the small detail that makes the difference, you've got to put that work in and prepare, prepare, prepare as much as you can so that you don't uh, regret it and regret um, not making the most of it, that opportunity. That's brilliant advice. Yeah, the more preparation you do, the less chance of nerves on the day playing a factor. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Any disastrous audition stories? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't know if they're just, sto just disastrous auditions. I don't know if they're really stories. I mean... I mean, you're hard on yourself. You're pretty hard on yourself with it. Yeah, I am. I am very hard on myself. And like, there's only been a handful of times where I've come out and I've gone, I think I might get that. I mean, that's quite rare. I mean, I, I, it's, it's only happened a few times. As far as disastrous audition stories, I mean, I auditioned for Mountview and I didn't get a place. Um, and uh, I remember, remember being... It's so crazy to my mind. I, I think Mountview, if by some freak they see this video, will be going... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very nice, but I mean, to, but, but, but that, but exactly, but it's exactly that. On the day, I did not cut it. I did not. I was. I remember feeling really a bit numb and a bit nervous, and I couldn't. I couldn't come out of my shell at all. I couldn't. I wasn't happy. I couldn't be. I just had no emotion because I was just so nervous and obsessed with the fact that, for whatever reason, I just couldn't couldn't do my best on that day, and that's a, that's a reality. Um, and I couldn't really couldn't really tell you exactly why. I remember doing chenets across the room and just like spinning into the wall and being like, 
and that was, you know, the, the standard of dance uh, on that audition day wasn't as high because people weren't going there for their dance. And I was just dreadful. And I remember forgetting my words in why God, why probably just went why God, why God, why God, why God, why, why. Maybe that's why I call it why God, why. Um, yeah, and mucking up my monologue as well. It just didn't go well for me. So that was pretty hellish. And I remember auditioning for Mamma Mia and they asked me to come in for Sky. And I thought, oh, this is a part that's right up my street. I can, I can do this. This is a role for me. And I don't know what happened, but I didn't learn the material at all. I didn't, I didn't learn the scene. I didn't learn the song. And I went in for my recall knowing that I hadn't learned the scene or the song, knowing they were going to expect me to do it. And it wasn't until I was on stage, in, I, and I think it would have been at the Prince Edward at the time, and they were like, right, so can you do the scene and the song for us? And I was like, oh yeah, right, great. And I picked up the music and looked at it. I hadn't done any work, any prep. And the resonant choreographer who'd seen me in one of my third year shows kind of came up to me. She was sort of smiling. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She grabbed me by the arm and she literally, I remember she went, she went, what are you doing? You're making me look like a fool. I've just told them you're really good. Now pull it out of the bag. I was like, okay. And of course, it was too late. I didn't know the song. I didn't know the scene. I was just trying to sight read the music whilst dancing around with a potential so lead Sophie girl. And I, I, I just was like, and I don't know what I was thinking. I, I didn't put the work in. I didn't put the prep in. And I mean, I find, fundamentally, they, they, asked me, yeah, they asked me to come back and they said, will you come back and dance this time? because we know you can dance a little and they, they danced it and I ended up covering it and going into it and I loved the job and I ended up meeting my teacher, my wife, who I'm still very happily married to now, so it was a great job, but I didn't put the work in for that audition. I'm very lucky I got given ensemble. I've never ever gone into an audition again since that point where I haven't known what I'm doing in Inside Out. If you could hear the audition story of any other actor, who would you like to hear? I would like to hear what um, Tom Hardy's story was. And I've heard a lot of stories about um, from people who maybe went to college with him and stuff about how he approached his training. Um, and uh, I just want to know if it's true. Okay, well, I'll see what I can do for you. Um, thanks, thanks. It, yeah, Tom I Hardy have got a feeling please. Tom Hardy might take me a few more of these interviews to kind of gain a bit of momentum, but. Well, I, maybe if he sees mine, he might feel that, <laughs> hey, <laughs> if he's doing it, maybe I should do one. Really, Ollie, thank you so much for giving out your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, please think about hitting the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button. If there's anybody you'd love us to interview, any actor you would love to hear from and their drama school edition stories, please send us a message either on our social media channels, Chiron Audition Prep, or leave a comment in the box down below and we'll try our hardest to get hold of that actor and get their audition stories for you.